Hey folks and welcome to another episode of Apps for Success. As always, I am your host John Bowman and each month we take a look at a different app that can help you to deliver value to your customers. This month we're going to be taking a look at Trello. Trello is a project management app that's owned by a company called Atlassian. What sets Trello apart is they believe really heavily in this thing called the Kanban methodology. It was made popular by Japanese manufacturing in the 80s uh, because it's really great for allowing team collaboration on projects as well as giving you a good transparency over your workflow. Uh, I am a fan of the Kanban methodology. In fact, I've seen it used tons of different ways. Some companies use it for the sales pipeline. Um, you can use it to keep track of all your onboarding projects. I know my real estate agent actually uses it to keep track of all of her ongoing deals. It can be used for a ton of things. It's very, very flexible. So I'm sure you can find a use in your everyday life. Now, before we hop into the app, as always, I do have a joke for you this month. When does a bad joke become a dad joke? Give up? It's when it's a parent. <laughs> On to the app, folks. Here we are inside Trello. And I really love the simple look of it. You probably hear me say that a lot in these reviews, but I love simple apps, right? There's a couple of rules from Trello, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna walk you through the basics. In the top right, there's a big plus symbol. When you click that plus symbol, you're gonna create a board, okay? A board, we're gonna to have to give it a title. We're just gonna say example board for this one. Now, once we create the board, notice it picked a nice picture for me. I love that. It's kind of one of those little big details, those things that you love that Trello does. But a board is where you house your lists. So this is list one, and then this is list two, and then this is list three, and then this is list four. See how we're just creating these lists? It's very easy. You can stop, right? So we've got these lists. The board contains the lists. Each one of these lists can contain what we call a card. So we're gonna add a card here, and this is gonna be card one, this is gonna be card two, this is gonna be card three, this is gonna be card four, this is gonna be card five. Well, let's go to six. So now we got card six. Now what can you do with these cards? Why is this cool? Well, what you can do with these cards is you can click and drag them, right? You can take one and you can move it over to a different list, right? So I'm just taking three to four, etc. Uh, I can take them back, I can put them in their place. There we are. Additionally, with each one of these cards, not only can I move them to a different list just by dragging them, I can click the card and open it up. And when I do, I can add in more information. The card is where you and your team members are gonna be able to add details like checklists and due dates and files and comments. So over here on the right, we can add a team member if we want to. Additionally, we can have some labels. Now these labels are great because they're customizable. You can add a blue label, or if we wanted to, you know what, let's just delete that. There we are. We're gonna edit this and we're gonna say this yellow one is paid, right? Or the orange one is, I don't know, waiting on John. We can add that in. These labels can say whatever you want them to say. I love that they're customizable like that. Additionally, on every card, you can add a checklist. The checklist can just have whatever name you want, like checklist one, and maybe it's got the steps that you need to complete. So it might be something like get information. Once you have the information, you need to process it. And then after you process it, you need to return to client in some way, right? There's general steps, a nice little checklist in there. For those of you who like checklists, please check out the Checklist Manifesto. It is a great book. You'll really, really like it. On the right over here is a thing called power-ups. You can click your power-ups there. And these are essentially the integrations. Well, not just integrations, but they're special actions you can add into your Trello board. For example, you can power up by adding Slack in. You can add your Google Drive. You can create some custom fields. You can make it a calendar view, right? So there we are. I just added a little calendar view. We can always disable it. We can change it. Now you only really get one in the uh, free mode, but if you have a business mode, you get unlimited. So you can put in zero, um, all your major apps, Salesforce, all those things, 
will allow you to connect in here. Uh, if this, then that. Zapier is another really great one that you can use here. So if you move somebody from one list to another, you can send emails, etc. But that is the card system. And after you have the card system, over here on the right side is just the menu. The menu allows you to do things like create a description for the board, or you can change the background. I love, again, all their pictures are top notch. We're going to have little sunflowers. There we are. Not only that, but when we go down, we can search those cards or we can add stickers. I think stickers are kind of fun, so you can just drag and drop those. Oop, there we go. Why isn't my sticker working? Sorry about that. There we are. So we can add stickers to cards. And you need to obviously upgrade if you want to add more stickers. Stickers are just social approval icons, right? So that people can see what you need to do. When you select more, you can edit your labels. You can see what you archived. You can even email cards into the board, right? So as you'll see, we can see there's an email address here. And I can take this email address and send an email into this board and it will create, right? They'll appear in list one at the bottom of the list. So they'll be over here, down here below. It's a great way to take your email and to create actions from them. We need to get this done. Remember, you can watch this board, right? You can also watch individual uh, cards inside of the board to so make sure that you know exactly what's happening. Each one of these cards can also be assigned to a specific team member just as a general good best practice inside of Trello. You only really want to attach one team member to it. So we're going to add me there. And as you can see, I'm now the board member. You want to take the owner of the project or the task and you want to add them in there. You don't want to have too many people on them. If you do have questions or if you need to ask somebody a question, you can actually at mention them. You can ask them questions. You can add comments down here below too, right? So we can say, you know, if I had somebody else in here, I could say someone, but that's just going to be me. There we are. What that I'll do is actually send an email to the person and it will store on the card that you asked this person for X, Y, or Z or whatever it is. Okay, so that's a general overview of what you do to create a Trello board. Now, what you can do with this is almost limitless. I love how flexible it is. So we're just going to run through a quick example onboarding board I set up here. Okay. If you're like me, you might have 50 to 80 onboarding projects a month that you have to take care of. Um, and then for your team, you know, your team's got a bunch more of other ones, right? I think at my last time we checked on average, this was about two months ago, we were doing 115 onboarding projects a month. All right. It's imperative that for me and my team, we have one source of truth, one location we can go to to know the status of any project at any given time. Now, we don't use Trello for this. We use Salesforce. Uh, I'm not going to open up Salesforce and show you what it looks like, but it looks identical to this because what we did was we created stages, which are essentially the lists within our Trello board here, right? Just as a general best practice, your first list should be the how to use this board list. It's kind of a tradition inside of Trello that you have a how to use this board list. All right. From there, though, essentially each one of these lists becomes a status of the job. We can see we've got our backlog. These are things that we're still probably working on. We've got our to do. Right. These are the things that we're ready to work on. We've got things that are in progress. We've got things that are in review. And then we've got things that are done. Now, each one of these, you'll notice there's plenty of stickers. There's also files I've uploaded. If we click this card, it's got a nice little image that I uploaded. But you can also see something called a label. See these labels? We know that this is missing information. We need some help. It's waiting on client, and they paid us. If we want to collaborate as a team, we can ask John to do X, Y, or Z. I can add that in. Or perhaps I need to create a checklist for a number of things that need to get done. Just like before, we can just say, you know, X, Y, and Z all need to be done, right? Additionally, every little card here can have a due date. You have to say the date that you want to actually get something done. You can pick a particular date, you can save it, and as you can see, there is a due date there. Now, the due date's really handy because you can take that card, and we're going to move it all the way over here to done, and when we did that, if you scroll down, look, you see the activity. See what I just did? John B. moved this card from backlog to done. It automatically stores what people are doing on any given card. This is essentially your source of record. You know exactly what has happened on this particular 
card. Additionally, if you have things like checklists, you know the source of action, right? You know what you need to do in order to get this thing done so you can check something off. You can hide completed items. I didn't, know, I didn't know that. I guess you could do that. That's cool. Additionally, up here you can see the due date, and we can check off that due date. We can mark it as complete. Or we can change the due date again if we want to, but we're just going to leave this one as complete. There we are. It is done in August, right? Each one of these cards, too, I love showing this because you can just click the little labels. Then you can see at a glance exactly what needs done and where, right? So... These stickers can mean something different inside your organization. For us, the stars mean important customers that we need to work on. The labels are essentially statuses that we need to keep track of. We only work on paid things here, so we want to make sure that we're only working on paid things. We have a little stoplight system that we use as well. For example, red means stop altogether. We can't work on this because we're waiting on a client. Yellow means we're missing information, so we need to get that information. Need help, obviously, you need help getting that information. And then green means ready for work because it's important that you know when you can start working on something. Imagine this sort of like a traffic light system, all right? You want to make sure that you're only working on things that are ready to work because if you do work on something that is not ready to work and is still missing information, you might do something wrong. And what that can do is actually double your workload because maybe a customer gets back to you and that thing you thought was actually XYZ is really ABC. And you know what that means? You have to go back and redo everything you just did, but you have to do it a different way. That essentially doubles your workload, folks, right? So Kanban is great at making sure you're only working on those things you need to work on. And this is the Kanban system. Forgive me, I should have mentioned that. Each one of these lists, essentially, is the Kanban system because you can just take something and move it into the list so that you know exactly what you need to do next. All right. That's a quick overview of how to use a Trello board for onboarding. You just create your lists and you move them along. With each individual project, you can add tasks using the checklist. You can write comments to your team to collaborate. Additionally, you can give them due dates as well as see the previous activity that has happened on this particular project when you're working on it. That's not the only use case for Trello though, and that's why I love Trello, because it's so flexible. For example, I've got a couple other boards here. You know, that's that one that we just created. There's also a quick self-development board here, right? How to use this board, to do, doing, etc. Read this, take this course, etc. You can put those in there. There's also a really, really th great thing called a reference board, right? We talked a little bit about references, files, when we were talking about your capture tool, when you were using Google Keep or whatever it is that you do to use it. Your reference board will, could contain specific articles that are about onboarding or the customer journey or a books that are about delivering that time to first value, right? Remember a, a nice little uh, best practice for any board is how to use the board, especially if you're collaborating with others. So make sure you take the time to do that. But you can create reference boards to have so that in the future, whenever you go to work on, for example, first time to value, you know exactly what you can use as source material. Not only that, but Trello has use, forgive me, Trello uses their boards internally. Like you can see, this is the Trello onboarding, uh, excuse me, Trello Android app. You can see there's a bunch of different requests here. Joining beta, move a card or another board, etc. Et there's a bunch of different uses for Trello. Trello uses those Trello boards for everything from taking user feedback to, let's go over here. You can see this is a sales CRM pipeline. So here's an example of the template. Contacted us, leads, contacted, meeting scheduled, proposal, one. Contact again, lost, right? You can keep track of all that inside of Trello. Or if you're just looking for inspiration, look at all these different categories they can do. Bike repair pipeline, CRM, sales pipeline. There are tons and tons of use cases here for you. One thing you might pay attention to is project management because every time you're doing an onboarding, you're essentially managing a project. But you can come here and you can see maybe Kanban development. Our developers actually use Kanban development. Again, backlog, dev, code review, etc. Go to the inspiration board and take a look at what you can see. It can really, really help you to see exactly how you can use Trello, but it'll perhaps allow you to start 
better tracking things like personal development uh, or photography or what have you. Remember at Trello 2, they also have the ability to get your team in here and you can set who sees what. You can have personal boards, you can have boards for your whole team, etc., etc. But again, I really love Trello because at a moment's glance, for example, for onboarding, you can just go there and I can know, oh, for customer I, I'm in the to-do and they paid us, they're ready for work. Why aren't we working on that, right? I can also come here and I can add a member to this card. I can assign it to somebody like so. I can know that they're responsible for doing it. See, it's got that little name on it. Generally speaking, it's the best practice as well. You only want to assign one person as the member of the card because that person becomes the owner of that project, okay? If that person needs help, of course, they can always ask questions by adding comments and at mentioning more people in it. But keep that in mind. Only assign one person who's the owner of the board. Trello is amazing for onboarding for project management like this. And again, it's no wonder that the name Kanban means visual signal because you can see at a moment's glance exactly what needs done and who needs to do it. Well, that's all for apps for success this week. I wanted to say thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. I always love hearing from you. And if you have anything that you want me to review, just let me know. Hope you're having a good day. Bye-bye now.